Do you have some belly fat that you would like to get rid of? Are you constantly snacking and not always grabbing the healthiest food? Would you like to eat healthier, but you need it to be simple and doable? Well, today in this episode, I chat with Lauren Rose and coach her live on the show. She's someone who struggles with chronic health conditions and has a lot of pain, but she wants to lose 30 pounds and reduce her belly fat. So we chatted and came up with some simple ways that she could start to eat healthier. And at the end, she says, my favorite thing, this is doable. So tune into this episode and I hope you guys can have some takeaways. Hi friends, and welcome to the Healthy Beyond 40 show. I'm Michelle, mom of four and military wife. I have my doctorate in physical therapy and I'm an online personal trainer, health coach, and yoga teacher. Do you wish that you had more energy and could get into shape? Do you feel like you're struggling to lose weight? Maybe you've tried a diet before, but it just wasn't sustainable, and now you don't know how to get started. We're gonna look at health holistically here, and most importantly, keep things simple and quick. If you're ready to develop healthier habits, exercise consistently, and lose weight sustainably without long workouts or following strict diets, then you're in the right place. In this podcast, I bring together my expertise with real life strategies. No magic pill here, so lace up those shoes and get moving. All right, so I'm so excited today to talk to Lauren Rose. She's going to share with us a little bit about what her current struggles are in her health, and hopefully we can get her one takeaway so she can take one step forward in her health. So Lauren, can you tell us what your goal is for your health right now? Sure. My Really, my biggest goal is I've got some belly fat that makes me extremely self-conscious. I do weigh, you know, 25 to 35 pounds. 25 to 30 pounds more than I'd like to. I'm about 157 right now. And before I became disabled, I was more like 135. So I do have some extra weight, but the the weight, the number doesn't bother me as much as the belly fat does. Yeah. And just real briefly, um, can you tell us what your chronic illness is and basically how that impacts your ability to maybe move or exercise? Yeah, so I've got uh, arthritis. I've got inflammatory and degenerative arthritis pretty much in my entire body. And I've got fibromyalgia. So, you know, I've just got pain throughout my body, which makes it really difficult to do any kind of movement. I keep meaning to try out this yoga place that I've got a, a one month, you know, coupon for. But every morning, my body is just hurting so badly. I just, I can't imagine going and, and doing anything like that. So um, that, that's that's my, my health struggle as far as that goes. And so you're wanting to reduce your belly fat. So maybe you're more wanting to start with diet over exercise? Probably, yes. Okay. So tell me a little bit. I know I had you fill out a form and you talked about sort of snacking. You tend to do that and you want to get away from that. So can you tell me a little bit about that? So I do get hungry every couple of hours. And I mean, with with having chronic pain, it is painful for me to prepare meals. So what I do it for, you know, my breakfast and my lunch and frequently my dinner is just eat some cereal or eat like a, a protein bar or an energy bar. And then that's the same thing that I snack on. So sometimes I'll throw in an apple with peanut butter but that's about really as, as healthy as I get, because if it's if it's not quick and easy and convenient, it's probably not going to happen for me. So you tend to eat every two hours and you tend to go for more processed food like cereal, protein bars um, with a little bit of real food sprinkled in there. But you're also having a hard time making the meals to make real food. Is that correct? Yes, I, I don't have a goal to do that every day, but I would like to make dinner for my family, you know, three times a week. My husband can cook too. He's a great cook, but I hate for him to come home every day after a full day's work and have to make dinner too. So I'd love to make meals at least three times a week for my family. Okay. And do you think that's something realistic that you can do? With your I think so. I think so. As long as, because I can spend the afternoon, you know, prepping and it's just between the pain and then my mental health gets in the way. So I've got a lot of depression and anxiety that prevent me from doing a lot of things. But if I can kind of maybe overcome some of my mental limitations, then I think physically I could do it. Yeah, I love that. 
And we can always, the way we think, it's always can change because our brain is neuroplastic. It's not easy, but I love how you sort of have that open mindset and that optimistic mindset. So my first thoughts are as you're eating every two hours, you're having more abdominal fat. And it sounds like the foods you're eating are probably higher in carbs and potentially sugar. That's making me think that you're a little more towards insulin resistant. Have you heard of that term before? I have. I've wondered if if I might have that issue, but I've never been checked for that. Yeah. So I'm not a doctor. I can't diagnose you, but I'll tell you what it is. So when you eat something, whether that is sugar or carbs, which carbs basically convert into sugar right in our bloodstream. So we consume that carb or that sugar and our blood sugar. So the amount of glucose in our bloodstream goes up. And then what happens is our pancreas kicks out insulin to bring that blood sugar down to help stabilize it. And what happens after a while is that keeps happening and the pancreas keeps putting out more and more insulin. And then your body, the cells start to become resistant to that insulin and then it needs more insulin. So Mm -hmm. typically you see this insulin resistance before you really see the fasting glucose or if people know what A1C, this insulin resistance is going to happen before all of that happens. And I know you said you're 43, but as you sort of head into more perimenopause and menopause, insulin resistance will also become more of a thing. So for you, I think working on figuring out how you can regulate your blood sugar a little bit better and keep that blood sugar lower. Obviously, we don't know what it is, but doing this isn't, isn't really harmful to try to eat lower glycemic or lower carb food. And you don't have to go no carbs or anything. There are some different hacks that you can do so you can still eat some of those carbs. But one of the good places to start is with your breakfast. So if we're typically starting with a breakfast that is cereal or bagel, something that's high in carb, we're getting that blood sugar spike right off at the beginning of the day. And that can also lead to our blood sugar dips. And then in a couple hours, we're hungry again. So it starts that blood sugar roller coaster, but it also can set you up for not really filling up in wanting those carbs again and again throughout the day. So how do you feel about starting your day with a better breakfast with more protein, maybe a little more whole foods? Yeah, I think that sounds doable. Okay. Is there any breakfast that you is easy for you to make that would have protein in it and whole foods? You can easily make scrambled eggs for the whole food. I mean, I can always make like whole grain toast or I could eat a piece of fruit or some berries or something. Yeah. And I think doing the scrambled eggs is a really good start. And also a little hack is making sure that you're eating that protein or a non-starchy vegetable first, because that's going to help to stabilize the blood sugar a little bit more. So if you're eating your carbs towards the end of that meal and you've gotten protein in it, typically people will have a lower blood sugar spike. So literally eating the same things, just changing the order can have a major difference on what the blood sugar does. So I think starting with scrambled eggs. And so when I talk about whole foods, like typically bread is going to be something that's processed to me. Because it's already broken down and that converts pretty quickly into glucose in our bloodstream. The scrambled egg could be a good start. If you wanted to have a little meat, you could. You could have a piece of fruit after that or like sometimes I'll do an apple with peanut butter. So you're getting the peanut butter has a healthy fat or protein or almond butter. Any type of nut butter can be a good thing. Just make sure that they don't have added sugars in it. They tend to add sugar to a lot of things. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, like things you don't even think of, they add it to. So that could be something that already sounds like you can do the eggs, you can add a piece of fruit or something like that would be a really easy start for you. So that would help get your day on a better track. And then I know you said you're typically hungry every two hours and starting with a bigger breakfast and making sure you're eating enough and getting more protein, that might help. But making sure you're eating enough at every meal so you're not hungry every two hours and eating constantly because we want to have a little bit of break so our body can digest and rest. If we're constantly eating, 
every couple hours, our body is constantly working on digestion. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Definitely start with breakfast. So if you were my client, we would probably just do breakfast for a week or two and really get that under control. Because when we throw too much at ourselves, we don't do it. So I think that's going to be a really good starting point for you. But since we're doing this, let's go one step further. So once you feel like you got that breakfast down, so we'll say that's a couple weeks from now, what do you think would be the next easiest meal to really tune into? Probably dinner because I could have my husband and my daughter help me with it. Yeah, that's perfect. And I know you were saying sometimes your husband makes meals, sometimes you do. So you sort of have that teamwork. So when we're looking at dinners, can you first tell me maybe what do you think are some healthy dinners that you guys currently have? Well, we frequently have um, like, say, chicken breast and a vegetable and a starch. So my husband, he had bariatric surgery, so he can't have any bread products. So pastas, rice, tortillas, breads, those are all pretty much out. We generally just have some kind of protein, some kind of vegetable or vegetables, and possibly a starch. If we do like spaghetti, I'll make um, like hearts of palm or you know some other kind of pasta substitute for my husband and me. And my daughter can you know eat the pasta because she's not quite ready to try pasta substitutes but and then we do like you know tacos and i we often do just like taco salad or burrito bowls without the tortillas Mm -hmm. things like that so i like to start with that because it's easier to do what we already know so it sounds like you guys have some good things in the mix so i love chicken with the vegetable and what does a starch mean to you usually like a, a potato of some sort okay Yeah. And so just the idea of like I mentioned with the breakfast, eat that protein first, save your starch for last can be a good way so that blood sugar won't spike as much. And I love how you mentioned like tacos. So sometimes like if we're having tacos or nachos in our house, sometimes I might have the nachos, but sometimes I'm just going to put that on the salad. So you're still making that meal for the family, but you're also figuring out a way I'm going to have a salad first, then maybe have the nachos or I'm just going to have a big salad. Same thing with the burrito bowl. That's great. So you're using, so rice or quinoa, that's a whole grain. So that's a good thing to have. And again, if you could just try to eat like a few bites of the chicken or the protein first. And just another idea with the spaghetti, we just had this this week, we did zoodles. So, you know, Mm -hmm. if you have a zoodle shredder um, or I have seen it in the freezer section too, but it's super easy because you don't have to cook zucchini noodles. And then you can add your meat, your sauce. And then I had a side salad with it too. And that can be a good thing. Same thing with spaghetti squash. That will have a little bit of starch or carbonate, but not near as much as like a potato or rice. That We call that nature's spaghetti (laughs) because it came (laughs) from the spaghetti squash. I think you have some good things to start with and then you could slowly add. And I'm guessing it's probably just being a little more intentional with those dinners, making sure that you're getting those healthy ones most of the most of the time each week. No, I think that feels feels pretty good. And and it's like you said, it's stuff that we're already doing. And, you know, we are already kind of making dinner for the family, but then kind of modifying it for what my husband needs or what I think I should be doing. Yeah. And really just amplifying those good things that you're eating, you know, so you're having those more, or maybe I'm going to like double the size of that non-starchy vegetable that I'm having. I'm going to eat more of that because a lot of us, for some reason, when it comes to like vegetables, we like have a little bit and we think we can't have that much more, but I mean, Mm -hmm. we can like load on the rice or the potatoes, but I think it's a little shift in the mindset. So I don't know if you feel that way, but sometimes I have felt that way too. So really upping up the non-starchy vegetables because we're going to get the most nutrients. It's going to also be very filling um, for us too. So yeah, so I think amplifying the good meals that you guys already have, and then you could sprinkle in some new ones as you go. Yeah, that sounds fun. I mean, we love trying new stuff, so. Yeah, well, perfect. All right, so you're going to start with your breakfast, making sure that you're getting the protein in, scrambled eggs, and then maybe adding like an apple or something else to go with that. And you could Mm -hmm. also add 
like avocado with the egg because that will have a healthy oh, yeah. fat and be very filling. So start with that breakfast. And again, once you feel like that's good, you could add a couple other things into your rotation of breakfasts. Sometimes I'll do smoothies. And then in a couple of weeks, start really amplifying the healthy dinners that you eat. Start upping that non-starchy vegetable intake. So how does that sound as a start? It actually sounds really really doable. So I like that. It doesn't sound too scary or too difficult, even, you know, having pain. And I think it sounds really good. Perfect. I love that. So that is like what I try (laughs) to do to make it doable, because I think we're also used to diets and having to do something really strict to see a change. So of course, you're not going to lose as much weight taking this approach. But what's going to happen is you're slowly going to lose that weight And you're going to keep it off because you're developing these new habits that you're allowing yourself time to stick with. That makes, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. I've tried some programs before, but then as soon as I stop it, the weight just comes right back on. So yeah, this makes more sense. Yeah. So I like to tell people, whatever you're going to start, make sure it's something you can stick with. And sometimes it can be a little hard at first because you're doing something new, but it's like, is this something I can stick with? And then that's something you want to start with. Well, perfect. Any other questions before we hop off today? No, it it seems just really easy and simple. So I've got no questions. Perfect. And Lauren, so I know that you have a podcast. Could you tell us about that so we can give it a little shout out here? Sure. My podcast is called It Hurts to Mom, and it's for people dealing with chronic pain and chronic illness like I do. Perfect. I love that. And I know how that impedes a lot of people from doing things. So I love that you're sort of putting that out into the world to encourage and to help others so we can all just sort of live better and feel better. I hope that this episode encouraged you and maybe sparked something in your mind about something you can do for yourself. And friends, I encourage you guys, if you are feeling stuck, to reach out to me and let's set up a free call and see if we can figure out something that works for you. So you can start seeing the whole picture for your health. Maybe these little pieces that you're missing that maybe you don't have the knowledge or you're just really stuck implementing them. On the call, we'll talk about your goals, your struggles, really figure out that next step. Maybe you could really benefit from my online personal training app where you can have your workouts, habits, and messaging with me to really hold you accountable. Or maybe you need access to my Healthy Insight and Out course where I dive into these blood sugar hacks that I was talking with Lauren about. And so you can really understand how to be in the driver's seat of your health. Or maybe you need some support and you need some health coaching. On this call, we'll figure out the best next step for you. There's going to be a link down below where you can sign up. All right, everyone, hope you guys are having a great summer and you keep on moving.